And welcome to the Midday Show, full of good choices today. I'm Jeff Everett. He is Mark Messina. I'm feeling a little bit better. Thank you for putting up with me on Monday. I'm excited for today's show because sometimes we struggle to find stuff. Today, we just kind of fell into things. There is the deep fake photos of Trump being arrested. Um, I came across this really interesting thing about TikTok and whether or not it needs to be banned. Micah Shrewsbury is supposed to make a decision about Penn State and Notre Dame today. And then maybe one of the greatest prison breaks of all time that we had just heard about. Mark, how are you feeling today? I don't like when you laugh at me right before we go on. Um, some people have told me you are easily offended. And Do you just think to be that's clear, true? Just to be clear, it's not like you're laughing with me. Like I told you a joke like 10 <laughs> minutes ago and you said, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. And then, but this, you're just laughing at me. I, first of all, you are a funny guy. I'll give you that. It's sometimes it's like your defense mechanism, but you are a funny guy. Um, no, I think most of the time I'm laughing with you. Let me put it to you this way. I think I'm laughing with you. So if I never am, that's Well, I my, said you know, that's something about a good choice, and I said that's all I'd make. My life is full of good choices, and you laughed out loud. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. <laughs> it's accurate. That's what happened. Um, Micah Shrews Do you think I was being self-deprecating when I said my life is full of good choices? I've told you before. Part of your humor is natural, but there's another part that is 100% a defense mechanism. <laughs> it is your way to try to ease tension, um, sometimes to an overwhelming degree. But <laughs> in your defense, it does pay off more times than not. All right. Um, what do you want? Let's. Can we start with the I, Trump wait, photos, or is there something? I, I don't even start? know. There's so much stuff to talk about. You can go. We can't miss today. Let's start. Let's start with the Trump photos. I want to share these photos just for anyone who's watching. These are not real photos, and we're going to talk about it and dive into it a little bit. Um, people were expecting Trump to be arrested on Tuesday. It was kind of, I don't want to say it was announced, but even Trump, Trump He's himself, the one that announced it. Trump himself came out, his team came out and said it. Um, so, of course, people went online with all the talk now about chat GPT and AI generation and all these different things. Um, some of the artificial intelligent tools, the photo creators, they asked people to make Trump being arrested. These photos started going viral on social media yesterday. And there's so many different things to talk about with this, because obviously there's the whole Trump side of it. Um, the deep fake side of this, I think we're only starting to scratch the surface with some of this stuff. If you didn't know better, those are real photos. Like at a glance, that is 100% Donald Trump being arrested. I think, and, and I didn't know about this until five minutes ago, and you okay. told me, and you showed me a glimpse. And Yes. I think this is a watershed moment for my generation. Okay. Of now, because we are still of the aspect, my generation is, your generation is a little more savvy okay. in, with all this than we are. If we read it online and it looks like an article and it smells like an article and it reads like an article, then we believe it. Because okay. before, when we were kids growing up, if Walter Cronkite said it, it was true. Yeah. It was, you know, it wasn't, they weren't saying it because of ratings and because of the competition like they if it was printed in the Sun Gazette or the Philly Inquirer or the New York Times, like it was, it was vetted and it was done. And now in our world, there's all kind, there's fake news, there's all this stuff, and people are just like, oh. And now with this stuff, there, this is going. There's going to be more and more of this. And with everything people see now, yeah. I hope the intelligent people are gonna. There's going to be that. I should probably double check and make sure this isn't BS. Interesting. So you think going one step further with images and videos, like artificially made images, yes. almost forces your generation to like double check. Like I it think, almost forces yes. them into like, I need to know if this is real or not because I don't know. Whereas text, it's not the same thing. So uh, you're, I, you're I, more I'm likely to believe text than a photo or a video. No, I think my generation fall, fell for all of it because we okay. were raised in a world where if it was... Yeah. You know, I think your generation and younger, they see some of this. I mean, there are, I would say, the percentage of 60-year-olds who saw this and were aghast is way higher than the 16-year-olds who saw it and are like, well, it's funny, but it's not real. Um, no, I think I agree with you. And there, and it should be the opposite because the older people are supposed to be wiser. And But 
the kids are so much savvier to this stuff than we are. They probably look right away and they're like, we can tell it's fake. Is that fake? Would you? Well, so one of the ways you can tell it's fake is the actual, the writing on the police officer's outfits. It's just jarble. Like it's not actually oh, anything. Okay. I, but, yeah. but again, like in passing, like if you're just on your phone and the image is that size, are you going to notice that? Do you, are you even looking at that? I'm telling you right now, that is some of the best artily, artificial, um, intelligent created images that I've personally seen. It's that tough, almost as passes off. I mean, the one on the left is a little wonky because it looks like he's trying to get away. But the one on the right, I mean, that is like, you, if that came, if you came across that last night, do you think you would have bid on it? No. No? I don't. It's still too because wonky Because one you. of the intelligent debates I had yesterday, I'd heard someone said, um, in the thing, you know, he's, I I've heard fingerprinted, fingerprinted because there's a yeah. booking process for everyone. Sure. And he's going to get handcuffed. And I'm like, really, are they handcuffing an, a, a former president over a month? He didn't murder anyone. If he was charged with murder, he's getting handcuffed. Mm. Like, and I know they say it's felony because of the hush money and all that stuff, whatever. Is he, re- if he turns himself in and he comes in and gets, are they really handcuffing him? Well, then yeah. one of the things I heard yesterday on the on the news was, is he getting a mug shot? And then I'm like, if there's anyone that's most photographed person in all the world, it's you know, he's ranked. So like, so these are the questions. So I'm I'm debating all of it before this. So if yeah. I would have seen this, I would have said you would have BS. questioning. One of one of the things that came up in my mind last night is I started coming across these fake images. Again, these are fake images. We're talking about deep fakes and kind of the world we live in now. One of the things that came across my mind, would this only work for Trump, though? Because as real as the images look, there's something unique about Trump where even people who disliked Obama, even people who disliked George W. Bush, right? Like people in that country still revered them as the president. Like you may hate Barack Obama, but if some, but if you came across him, like that was the president of the United States, right? And same thing with George W. Bush on the left. Like that was still the president of the United States. There's something very unique about Donald Trump where I really believe half the country does not view him as a president. Like they almost viewed him as like something out of time that just like right place, right time. And he won an election and he held this office. But like, I don't, they don't view him as the president of the United States. So what struck me when you said that was he's still like, he was a president of the United States. He can't handcuff him. I don't know if half the country thinks of it that way. Like, I think half the country views him as like the host of The Apprentice. And for him to end up in handcuffs would be like any other celebrity ending up in handcuffs. Um, I mean, you make a valid point. He He's the most polarizing. So that's um, why half the country feels that way. But he's still the president. I, I just... I agree with I don't that. Know. I think the part of this that works is whether it was Bush or whether it was Reagan or whether it was Clinton or whether it was Obama or whatever, they're not fighting. You, just, you couldn't imagine that them throwing punches at the police. But I think with Trump, he gives that image like, yeah, let's fight. <laughs> I, think he, I think he's way more a verbal connoisseur when it comes to abuse, like fighting, than physical. Well, I would, would you agree with too, that? Because... I don't think he's I getting see, in barroom brawls at, at the 19th hole of his golf course. What's but, funny to me is I never, I could never picture Trump swing ever. Really? I just don't, yeah. I think he's, I think it's all, I think it's all talk. I think it's all verbal. So when you take of our, well, of the, of my lifetime, when you look at the guys like Reagan uh-huh. and Clinton and Bush and Bush and Obama, you and Biden even yeah. you if someone's throwing a punch out of that group if we're ranking presidents most likely to swing like I put Bush way ahead of Trump you think I do I think because the I younger think, one yeah oh yeah, okay. yeah the younger one I just think um I think with Trump, as someone who voted for Trump like for someone who did vote for Trump I am very willing to sit here and say like it is more performance and it's more of a verbal performance than any actual physical integrity that would be defended by a punch or a fight. That is my opinion of Donald Trump. See, now one of the times I voted for Bush. Mm. And I don't, I don't know. I don't see that. I don't don't, like, I see Clinton getting in a fight before Bush. Well, I don't do, I mean, listen, if we want to go through and make our rankings, we can. (laughs) I'm just saying like, I, when I think of a Republican who's going to physically fight someone, Trump is not what comes to mind. Really? Okay. No. Now, he'll verbally drag you through the mud, right? Right. I mean, he will demean you and belittle you to know it. He will literally make you want to step off the stage. 
but like the physical. So he's no Teddy that, Roosevelt in your eye. I don't think so. Okay. No, that's my opinion of him. All right. Anyway, I think. I mean, it's funny because that's all the you know. There's so many memes. It's essentially a meme. Um, yeah. But no, I do. I think this for our for my generation and up will be one of the moments because and AI and all this, the chat GPT and all this stuff is, is so new and it's just going to get bigger and broader and better and all that sure. stuff that, that people are going to, the old people are going to have their, it, this is finally what's going to teach them to be like, Hey, I might want to take a second look at that before I'm like, Oh, share, share. Did yeah. you see what happened? So it's, I hadn't thought of it from like, so what you're saying is for older generations, there has to be a tipping point where it's no like, Something has to happen for them to be like, I just have to start checking this stuff. Yes. It and doesn't matter a, how real it looks. And you think this, this may be the tip. This point. might be. Interesting. Because it's with a president. And with yeah. it's, an, it's such a historic event, if, if it ever is a historic event. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Heather, I think Mark is putting himself in the wrong generation. Gen Xers, which Mark is one of, are skeptical by nature. And I think we do research if something is true or not. Boomers, on the other hand, seem to be the ones that believe uh, they don't see right on. But see, you don't consider yourself a boomer. I'm not a boomer, no. I'm a Gen X. Okay. Wait, aren't I? Well, I don't yeah, know. I don't know where you would fall. I think there are things about you though that are very boomerish. I know that's be- would you agree that's or disagree? That's just because you that? think I'm really old. Well, no. So, for example, like I guess I'm a millennial, but certainly there are things about me that are Gen X, and there are things about me that are Gen Z. Like without a doubt, there are things that I much more relate to the people in the generation above me, and then there's other things I'm way more like the generation below me. I think you're very similar. There, you have certainly some boomer aspects to you. You don't. You don't. Such think as so. I don't know what a boomer aspect like. Like you, like clickbaity. Like you, like you are certainly adjusting to the world that is that technology clickbait. now runs. Yeah, you don't my, think so? It's my weakness. Clickbait. Like even just technology use. Like you, like you have admitted that like you are way more boomer I am, when it comes to techno- I am, technology. I am, re- and this is kind of the way my whole life is. But I am really, really good with the technology that i like sure if it's an if you bring in a new technology to me i break out in a sweat yes because and that's very you you dive right in and in five minutes you figured it out correct which is very gen z probably yeah yes. so um, so no you see no i think i th- feel bad for boomers because now it's become like when i say you're boomerish i'm like i don't even mean it in a negative way like you just have boomerish but the the term has it's, diminished it, yes there's no doubt now, about like that. to even say that is almost like an offensive thing and i didn't mean it like that at all well i just know to go back to heather's point i know people a lot of people my age that um if they read it and they want to believe it they believe it yeah or if they read it and they don't want to believe it you know they don't it, it goes more the other way though yeah. if it supports their argument and it comes up in their algorithm and they read it they're like oh hell yeah and you're like that's not even true yeah. um there was something else i was going to say about um, oh clickbait go ahead well bo real quick the dude has been on wwe i think that helps with it too um the funny he's thing in is, the hall of fame isn't he maybe the funny thing is that helps yours and i would argue also helps mine because <laughs> wwe again is not real it's a performance and i think trump is a performer well okay hold on it is real it is a real performance. <laughs> Correct. Which Trump, that's what Trump is. Um, tastes like good. If we assume they'd all swing and connect, Obama's the one punch you do not want to take. That answer changes if Trump gets deep fake arms. Um, I like the comment about his arms. That was big. Um, I, I don't know. Trump's the biggest. Trump's the biggest. Who, Physically. Trump is now. I know he's old. Yeah. But this is going to be. He's up. not a small. He's what is he? Six, three, two. Yeah. Well, this is, I don't, this he's not be, a little person. No, not at all. Um, this might be, I'm trying to think if it's correct to say or not. Um, it was Roosevelt who's in the wheelchair, correct? Yes, Frank. I mean, that's the one you don't want to take a punch from. Wait, what? I, just anybody who uses a wheelchair jacked. Uh-huh. I mean, they're, I mean, they are. Except they get polio. But, yeah. You know. Well, you get what I'm saying. That's who you don't want to take a punch from. Um, did I ever tell you when I saw Trump in person? He's huge. He was getting, it was uh, Yankee Stadium. Um, Real quick, legitimately, like six three. Like he's I think not, he's six three or six four. Yeah, I but mean, he's not the, small. The funniness of my story is we were waiting out. It was Yankee Stadium. It was during the World Series. We were waiting outside the elevators where and and where the elevators. The players come up and the other people, the important people, come down. Mm. And um, he got off the elevator with Regis, who is like yeah. five three. Yeah, and it was like twins with Danny DeVito and Schwarzenegger. Yeah. 
And it was kind of like at the moment, because everyone's like, oh, this, and this would have been, it was probably the, it was either 01 or 03. Okay. But um, it was kind of at the same time, you're like, wow, Trump's either taller than I thought or Regis is shorter than I thought. But it was just that right. dichotomy because he is a foot taller than, is Regis still alive? No. I was going to say that away. Regis was. I, I don't know. Look but up, anyway, but sure that was my. Um, but yeah, Trump is not a small person. No, he isn't. Um, do you want to tell about the Shawshank oh, story? That came no, out? I want to say this first. As you made okay. fun of me for clickbait, this happened to me at 3.30 in the morning the other day. And as you always are like, just scroll by it. Just scroll by it. Because I say, when you see this stuff, how do you not click on it? And you're just like, I just scroll by it. So one of the ones I clicked on was celebrities name the rudest celebs in the industry. Okay. So this is celebrities yes. calling out other. This isn't like the ones where you had a waitress who waited on so and so said he was great or so he was terrible. Okay. These are celebrities calling out the other celebrities. If you see that, how do you not click on it? I just I don't. Anyway, what did it say? Uh, it listed some that were bad. <laughs> so it's, so it's and I mean, there. Were, but the thing was, at least in the other ones, you get some that are really good and some that are really bad. Um, like um, John Wick, who's the guy who's John Wick? Keanu Reeves. Uh, Keanu Reeves is supposedly like the nicest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. And you get the ones that they wait on people and say how wonderful they are. And then the ones that they wait on how rude they are. Yeah. Um, yeah so all these were like famous people telling how badly they hated other famous people. Yeah. So that was kind of funny. I can't, I don't know how anyone would not click on that. I would never click on that. I did hear, I recently watched uh, Knocked Up for the first time in like a decade. Did you ever the movie? Watch I did Up? watch it. Um, Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl. I heard she's bad. So apparently, that's why I brought it up. Apparently, Catherine Heigl was not easy to work with, but it's so hard to tell with this stuff. I mean, you, well, like, no, you know why it's easy to tell? How? She hasn't had a job in 10 years. But that's the point I was going to make. Like, with some of this industry stuff, like, you upset one wrong guy, and then it's like they just start blackballing you, and that's the rumor, and then it spreads. So, like, I'm not defending Catherine Heigl, but the point I'm making is I think that stuff's way harder to tell than, than what people make it out to be. People make this assumption like, well, if they weren't working, they must have been a pain in the ass. Well, no, I, I like, heard she was a pain in the ass and she wasn't working. I did too. But my point being, though, is like, I, you just don't know. And I when she was on Grey's, she was on top of the world. Yeah. Like, she was it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've heard she's, you know who else I heard is tough? Who? Uh, Ed Norton. Oh, really? I've heard Ed Norton is tough. Yeah. Mr. Um, Fight Club and yeah. the Incredible Hulk and... Yeah. It's um, just a, that industry is fascinating. Like if you could act, if you could ever get like truth serum and actually hear like the real reasons people didn't get work or did get work, I bet you some of it is out of this world. You know, besides uh, Keanu Reeves, you know who I heard was one of the nicest who? was um, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. That everybody loved Charlie. Now he obviously had issues. Sure. But um, they think like whether he's bipolar or, you know, something like that. But um, yeah, they said everybody loved work with Charlie. He was incredibly generous. He was kind. And he was. Yeah. So anyway, be that as a man. Um, Not I'll, that I ever met him. So I'm just telling you what I heard. I will let you pick uh, Michael Shrewsbury, Micah Shrewsbury, uh, TikTok or the Shawshank. Story. Let's let's go to Shawshank. OK, go ahead. Yeah, let's do Shawshank story. You you actually sent this to me like 15 minutes before the show. Oh, you want me to find it? You don't have. I mean, you don't have to find it if you um, want to. Right. Um, so on. essentially what happened was Virginia inmates used a toothbrush to dig a tunnel out of jail and head to an IHOP where they were found and arrested. Um, you can find the story. It's making the rounds now online on different social media platforms. Um, so you actually, behind you, up there in the corner, if you want to, yeah, you actually pulled out the old Shawshank Redemption. Listen, I'm not going to lie. You know this. Shawshank is my favorite movie of all time. You know time. why? Because it's a great movie. It's incredible. Um, in a weird way, like, are these guys my heroes? Well, I think I like, these, what I I think I like these guys. Andy so Dufresne well. went to Mexico. Yeah. He did not eat. He did not stop. He ran. All the way well, from he, New England to Mexico. He went to a couple of banks, remember? He well, yes, he did. Out. Yeah. He did. But then he sprinted. It did not stop, did not look back. These guys went to IHOP? Like, I hope they changed. Like, what? It, we'll find out. I mean, as more details come out, we're going to find out what happened. So your first stop would not be the IHOP. I hate breakfast food. I would. Well, I even said, I, I think IHOP, I think it's funny. I think it's a good, but I think it's overrated. I, I've never loved. Here's one of the things that I... Can we, I don't. I love fruit. Do not put fruit on my pancakes. Do not put whipped cream on my pancakes. Okay. You know what comes on waffles and pancakes and French toast? What? Butter and syrup, and that's it. Okay. No going, chocolate chips. No nothing else. Going back to the prisoners okay. escaping. I think the hardest part for this, like if you and I were in prison and right. we were going to escape, right? In a weird way, we would survive three days. Not even. The weird part 
is not the plan to get out. I feel like once you're out, that's when like the real chaos begins. I mean, what are the odds? Because yeah, in the back of your head, you have to be thinking, I'm not actually getting out of here. Like, oh, I, have I disagree. I think they all think they're really good. you so like they have nothing else to do. So clearly, like, what else are you gonna why not try to get out with a toothbrush and right. put a hole in the wall? My point though is like, do you really believe that? Like, do you really think you're getting out? Like you're digging this stone wall with a toothbrush for I don't know who knows how many months or years. Do you honestly think you're getting out? How many years did it take Andy Dufresne? Years. And he also had to cook the books with the warden. So that's so here's the point I'm making. If you were Andy Dufresne, there was a motivation to get it right. Because if you actually did get out, there was a plan. There was money. You were going to be able to get away. For these two, like, what are the odds that once you actually get out, what is your plan? Like, what are you actually doing when you get out? You and I are sitting in a prison cell, and I say to you, Mark, I think I can actually get us out of here. What are you saying to me? Like, what is our plan once we're through the hole? But Okay. It's interesting because I never watched it. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I, I don't think – do you think you care? I think you, that's the point I'm making is like, you said, why would they just go to an IHOP? And the point I'm making to you is like, well, I know why they went because they were hungry. I'm saying it kind of makes sense to me because I don't think most people, A, think they're actually getting out and B, actually have a plan once they're out. I don't think you have options once you're out. I don't think it's simple. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Where they have plans, where they have options. I get that. And I don't know how far they got. You know, maybe they went, you know, 50 miles on foot and sooner or later you do have to eat. I mean, I get all yeah. that. Um, here's my. Point. It just adds to the like, to the story. To this, they yeah. found him at IHOP. Like, I I'm, don't know. I'm telling you, I I think getting out is the easier. Excuse me, is the easier part. I think once you're out is like the holy crap. Like, we don't have. Think about it. You don't have money. You don't have money. I disagree. You don't have really. You think it's easier to? I, I don't think that. I think they're pretty good at keeping the prisoners in prison. You think it's easier to stay out than it is to get out. Yes. No, I, I disagree. I, I think it's really hard to break out of prison. I mean, I've seen Escape from Alcatraz too. I've seen The Rock. Listen, but I know I, don't... I know the analytics are a little skewed because, like, in order to stay out, you have to get out. But like, think about how many people get out versus how many people stay out. I mean, way more people get caught again than actually. It's much harder once you're out. Of I will, uh, so when we're done, I'm going to Google how many people that escape from prison are actually caught yeah i think it's hard i think, think about you, it you think it's hard to catch them i think one the i think it's a lot hard i think your chances of getting away are one, better once you get out that's what i think well yes but like where okay tell me the plan then this is the point of, you keep <laughs> right. saying that just exactly right. you keep saying that but i gave you 15 minutes here to I, tell me what the well, plan I would be think, and you didn't give me yeah, anything. what's the plan of breaking out I think it's hard to break out of prison they unless you have a it. brother with the whole prison thing tattooed on himself they like a TV with, show. Yeah, they did it with a toothbrush. So, like, if what? you want to do it, like, you're going to, like, you can figure it out. The hard can part you? is staying. Can out. you? Can you figure it out? Did I don't think you can figure it out. I think it's impossible. They did it with a toothbrush, and it was so simple. They were like, let's go to IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I, maybe you're more of a badass than I am. I don't. I doubt. I, I think I breaking doubt. out of prison is tough. That's um, what I think. TikTok or Micah Shrewsbury? Um, I don't know what you're going to say about TikTok. So let's go to Micah Shrewsbury. Okay. Because that is. Okay. Um, Can I set the plate for you? You go you ahead. Because you, you had some ahead. thoughts. I have thoughts. Um, this is a big day for Penn State fans. It's a big day for Penn State basketball. Penn State basketball traditionally not a very good basketball program. They've had some some highs, but those highs don't last very long. Correct. Um. You know, back in the 90s, Today, not to interrupt you, in the 90s, they beat UCLA in the first round of the tournament. They also beat UNC in the 90s or the 2000s. They knocked out UNC early on, too, as well, as like a 14 seed or something. Maybe it was UNC then. Maybe I have the wrong Instead one. Of I, knew they I knew they beat a blue blood because yeah. I remember being at my buddy's house watching this. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, right. go ahead. Well, if you're going to interrupt me, get the right blue Sorry, blood. Sorry, I, yeah. I, I might have the wrong uh, one. <laughs> um, so, notoriously, they get rid of coaches after a couple of years. Michael Shrewsbury. Very successful. He's been in the NBA. He's coached at Butler before. He's coached in Indiana before. Today is a big day because they are fighting to keep Micah Shrewsbury. According to reports, Penn State has raised the financial offer for his contract as far as years and money. They have raised the name, image, and likeness, which goes to the players. So essentially, they're trying to raise that to be on par with the rest of the Big Ten. 
it sounds as if Penn State has pushed their chips to the middle of the table a little bit to try to make Penn State basketball relevant, really for the first time ever, like truly consistently relevant. The scary part for Penn State is Notre Dame is in the running. Shrewsbury is an Indiana guy, as I had mentioned before. It seems all the reports right now is that it is 50-50. And so my fear is I'm to the moon that Penn State has finally pushed their chips in to kind of say, we would like to try to be a basketball school. And my fear is Shrewsbury might say, it's not enough, sorry, and decides to go to Notre Dame, which as an institution is great, but as you and I agreed before the, the show, is not a like like a basketball power. And so to lose Shrewsbury after pushing your chips into the middle of the table to a school that isn't viewed as a basketball school, I think would just be unbelievably detrimental to any hopes of Penn State being good at basketball consistently. And so they – and that was very well said. If – um. And Notre Dame lately has been better than Penn State in basketball. But mm-hmm. as you're right, they're not. People aren't be like, oh, one of the elite programs of the country is Notre Dame. Yes. He, but, for example, he he is not leaving for Butler. He is not leaving for Indiana. Like in the in the realm of Indiana basketball, Notre Dame is oh, not. Oh, Notre Dame's bigger than Butler. You think so? They're in the ACC. In basketball, yeah, though? Yeah, they're in the no, ACC. See, they Butler, play Duke and Carolina. Slow down. Butler is now in the, uh, is it the Big East? It's the, the Big East. The Big East. I mean, Butler is a basketball school. Like that, that yes, is a they're so, basketball so the school, point but they're making, still not Notre Dame. The point I'm making is if you're going to take a basketball job yeah. in Indiana, you are picking Butler over Notre Dame. Nah, I don't know. Continue. The, the, the two biggest basketball jobs in Indiana are Indiana and Purdue. There's no doubt about that. Correct. But, so be that as it may. Um, so here's what I think. Uh, I have lots of thoughts on Penn State basketball because we talked about this for years. When Massey and I used to do our radio show, we used to talk about this. Um, I think – that historically, and from a guy who you know grew up here, and obviously Penn State's a football school, I have always blamed Paterno, and this is not a guy you know you know spitting on his grave. I there's there's this belief that the the people who you know drink the Kool Aid like, well, you can't be good at basketball and football. Look, Ohio State is, Michigan is, Alabama, Florida is, Alabama. Well, Alabama's a flute. We'll see if they can keep it going. But like Oklahoma has been there. There are lots of places, Florida, in that the 2000s. have thousands. Yep. There have been lots of places that have been good at both. Now, it's hard. Don't get me wrong. But you can be good at both, especially when you're a huge institution like Penn State is. Sure. And, again, you look at Ohio State. Ohio State's a Final Four team. They're a top ten team. Year, you know, this year they stunk. But um, Michigan, Michigan State, you know, both – well, Michigan State football is hit or miss. But, anyway, be that as it may, um, I think – uh, if Penn State had ever really wanted to be a good basketball program, they could have been because of New York City and Philadelphia and Baltimore and Washington, D.C. are so close. And now with the Big Ten Network, which has been around for 20 some years, you can tell these parents, hey, listen, to the home games, you're a three, four hour drive because all those cities are a three, four hour drive. Mm-hmm. So you can get to every home game and every road game you can watch on the Big Ten Network. Mm-hmm. So, like, you want to see your kid play, you can see him play. And it's closer to go from Philly, Baltimore, New York to, to State College than it is to go to Tobacco Road mm-hmm. or go to Florida or any of those places. So that's uh, number one thought. Um, I think there was almost this aspect of like, we are football, 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 and to be football, 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 we have to push down basketball. Um, that is one of my thoughts. Now I think that they're seeing that – hey, there can be a lot of money in this. And, hey, there's a lot of buzz when they're good. And they got to a Big Ten championship game. And they got So I my two arguments about Shrewsbury, number one, well, first of all, they should keep him. And the reason I think he's going to stay is because he's still as a kid in, co- in high school mm-hmm. at State College. Mm-hmm. And I know the one is graduating, coming to play with him. Yep. And the other one is right there. And I think the timing in that aspect is really, really in Penn State's favor. Because as long as they like State College High, like, they'll probably leave well enough alone. That would be my guess. But if they don't, uh, so from that aspect, I think he's just leveraging. And I think he's leveraged as best as he can. And he's like, well, it's coin flip, I'll make a decision day. They've upped uh, the NIL money. They, uh, I think he's leveraging. I think he's doing a good job. Um, but the other thing is, it becomes very hard for the university. If he does say, I'm going to Notre Dame, it becomes very hard for, for the university to say, okay, then we're just backing off again. If if the, the fan base or the alumni are saying, look, you know that to get a, a legitimate big-time coach, which now Shrewsbury has become, 
you have to pay him X amount. And just because Shrewsbury may have turned it down, you have to pay the next guy X amount mm -hmm. or you're not going to get a big time coach. Mm -hmm. So I think I think once the, the gold card has been handed over and they're like, you can swipe it, I think it's going to get swiped, whether it's Shrewsbury or not. Okay. Now the question, is, but I think Shrewsbury staying because of his kids at State College High. What's interesting to me is I think a lot of people feel like Penn State could have been good at basketball regardless of who the coach was. And I think what Shrewsbury has shown is it really matters who the coach is. I agree with that. I, I think it's like you said, like there's no reason Penn State couldn't be good. And I agree. I think over the years, though, they have never divvied up or have been willing to pay for the person who could who could do it. And that's no offense to like DeCellis or anybody who came before him. Because it's a hard, like, it's not an easy job. Right. But, like, if you find the right person, that can be turned into a consistent. And here's the thing. Like, the examples you were giving earlier are, like, schools that are, like, national title contenders. I'm not sitting here saying Penn State should be a national title contender in basketball. What I'm saying, though, is, like, they should be consistently in that five to eight range in the Big Ten. And in a good year, like, you're, you're kicking in the top four, top three of the Big Ten. And you're making the tournament consistently. And that's the the possibility with Micah Shrewsbury. That's realistic. Yes, that's a that's a real thing. So the the hard part is if you're gonna you're gonna give all this money for the NIL, you're gonna give Shrewsbury the years and the contract that he wants. And the funny thing will be to watch Penn Staters go if he finishes fifth in the Big Ten and they get an eight seed in the tournament. It'll be interesting to see if Penn Staters appreciate it or if they go well wait a second i thought this guy was the truth yeah, I like think, i thought this it'll be interesting to see i think how they'll people... appreciate it i mean michigan state was just a 7 well they're still a 7 they're still in whatever mm -hmm. i i think that they'll appreciate any tournament they hadn't made the tournament since 11 it had been 13 12 years since they made the ncaa tournament yeah so anything that they get in i think people are going to appreciate anything that makes them relevant um but yeah you look at schools like illinois Who've, who've had flat, they've, they've been a Final Four team. Mm -hmm. But there's no reason Penn State couldn't, year in and year out, over the next decade, that Penn State couldn't be every bit as good as Illinois and Wisconsin. Well, there is a reason, because you don't have the right guy. That, well, that's if the, Shrewsbury that's the stays, Correct. they're here. Yes. And you look at teams, and they're, one of the other things we've seen in all kinds of sports, Louisville's awful now. Mm -hmm. There was a time that you I would have never thought Louisville was awful at basketball. Um you know, Wisconsin has dropped in both basketball and football. They they're they're not awful, but they're way worse. Yeah. Um, no, it's delicate. It's it, uh, Florida. It slip Florida fast. used to be a football power. Yes. Football is Florida is not a football power yes. anymore. Florida State and Miami, the whole state has kind of fallen yes. into this. And there's more. So just to wrap it up, there's more at stake than people realize. If you are a Penn State supporter, like an alumni, a fan, whatever you are. Um, what has happened in the last week recruiting wise for Penn State men's basketball is almost uncharted territory. Um, they have th the number one guard in the portal. His first phone call was to Penn State because he believes he can do what Jalen Pickett does. Right. And Jalen Pickett was un essentially an All American. You know what? I, um, go ahead. They, that's I have a thought. They have the NEC player of the year from St. Francis is on campus either yesterday or today. Um, seven footer, scored over 20 points in NEC. He's one of the best centers in the portal. First visit and only visit as of right now is to Penn State. They also got a commit from 2024. He's a top 20 center. Um, this is on like that never happens for Penn State ever. And oh, they in, get top so, 20 centers, but it's football. In the yes, in the last seven days, what has happened to Penn State from a recruiting aspect makes Shrewsbury worth every dime. I don't even need to know what his record will be next year. The interest from athletes in the NCAA to come and play for Penn State basketball has never, ever been higher than this. Give him every dime he wants. Have you had – you know one of the other things that I think plays into this? His um, – did you – his his in-game interviews and his going off to halftime and at the timeouts and the stuff that there's mandatory that, that CBS made him do. Um, did you watch the games with the sound on? What do you mean? When you're watching the NCAA tournament games, or were you watching? Most of the time, I have the sound jacked all the way up because oh. I want to hear what the players and the coaches are saying. Oh, okay, I can imagine because I'm, okay. I'm a nerd. I understand that his demeanor hmm? during the interviews, he was, it was, um, 
I think it 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 plays wonderfully for him. Sure. He was never all wound up. He was like he was listening. There's some guys that you can tell that they're like, give me the question so I can answer it and get the hell out of here. Sure. He was like poised and thoughtful and like intelligent and kind and almost smiled and he just came across mm -hmm. like the nicest guy in the world. Sure. And whether he is or whether he isn't, I don't know. But his those interviews with him going into halftime, coming out of halftime at the timeouts, I thought spoke incredibly well, even after the wins in the Big Ten tournament and in his win in the NCAA tournament. Like he was he was humble, he was complimentary, he wasn't hoarse. So you can tell he didn't scream his, his sure. brains out the whole game. Like he was just like a normal guy. Like, yeah, we're happy we won. And you know what it is. Yeah. And I think though, if you're watching that, if I'm a, if I'm a good high school basketball player watching that, yeah. not only do I like the style that they play, right? Because the style would be a fun style to play. Yeah. But I'm like, I think I could play for that guy because he seems like a decent human being. I'm making assumptions, but everything you said to me screams that he was an NBA guy. He is somebody who has been in the NBA and been around people in the NBA. And he, so he's been around people who know how to give an interview. He's been around people who like is a player's coach. He under, like he just gets things that like someone who has had to scratch and claw their way up through the system may not understand. That's my opinion. Of what no, I'm that's saying. true. And I um, think there's I, a value, as you said, with NBA, you treat pros and adults differently than you treat kids. Correct. And that's why we've seen so many coaches who – thrive at the college level yes. can't do it at the pro level yes. but you kept seeing of like the interviews of, of him like working one-on-one -on -one with the nba guys and talking and, yeah. and his you can tell his his teaching is so much more conversational yeah. than it is um drill sergeant yes and it goes even deeper because the style they play is nba like it's isolation right. it's finding mismatches stuff it's they need to pay him do whatever it takes i don't care what they have to do they're giving he the, stay the quarterbacks are getting teslas and like two million dollar nil deals give micah shrewsbury whatever he i'm, wants I'm here to tell you i, I know um, you're stressed about it. you're more stressed about this than i thought you would be i am um he's stay. okay i hope so I, um, i'm just telling i you. do want to mention they need to get rid of the in-game interview for the ncaa tournament they need to get rid of it it's pointless in basketball it's different they're like paid professionals like all this stuff like in the NCAA, there's no need. They interviewed. It was the Pittsburgh game. Didn't Pittsburgh jump out to like an 18 to two lead or something like that against on? Iowa State? They had to, they, they interviewed the Iowa State coach when his team was down 20, eight minutes into the game, and and what do you like? Of course he doesn't want to talk to you. Why would he want to talk to you? He is. They are down 28 minutes into the game. He doesn't. He needs to talk to them, not you. They well, need this to is, get rid of the interview. This it's is what pointless. I said. It's dumb. I thought that at first, but then they've extended the timeout. It doesn't matter. So they're telling him, here's the deal. Instead of your timeouts being this long, they're 30 seconds longer. And once a game or twice a game, we're going to interview. We're going to suck up that extra 30 seconds. Matter. You're not losing any of your time. It's pointless. It's, it's not pointless. pointless. It is pointless. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're not earth shattering no but i i don't know i think they're none of them are as good as popovich is but um i, I it's part of the money it's part of the yes. gig and I, let me put it to you this way if i were the ad at iowa state and the iowa state coach did not take that interview and the ncaa wanted the finest or whatever i'm swallowing it good like i'm happy that you, you don't know how much to, they, it might, happy, they might lose all their money i'm happy that our coach wanted to talk to our kids when we were down 20 in the NCAA tournament instead of the interview. I would but he, swallow. But it. he got to talk to the kids. He still had plenty it's of time not, to talk to the kids. So you plenty would be time. so you would be fine with it if you were the it's Iowa part, State. If coach. it's part if part of the issue is listen, you have to do one or two in-game interviews. Yeah. Everybody else does. Uh -huh. What does he you, know you know what know, I would have said at the interview? You know we're how trying you, to figure out how to make a shot. You know how you know I'm right and you're wrong? Because you're on the side of the NCAA and I <laughs> that's how I know I'm right and you're wrong. No, whatever. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? We obviously have the uh, – I have the TikTok thing. I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. It's really not a big deal. Um, obviously, everyone's been talking about banning TikTok. I'm kind of swaying to the other side. I think it's kind of absurd. I, yeah, I don't know if everyone's talking about banning TikTok. I think a lot of people are the – I didn't know it was a Chinese company until it came out with the – we need to ban TikTok because it's a Chinese company. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, I yeah, think I don't there's, know. There, there's not. I understand like the protection of information, and I I get all of that. 
that like the government didn't protect any of your information when it was an American company. Like they didn't protect your information from yeah. Facebook and like these other, like Facebook and all these other companies, they've been selling your information for years. They have all these data points on you. They've been selling it overseas. Like they're like the idea that your information was protected by an American company compared to the Asian company is absurd. It doesn't make any sense. And here's what's crazy too. The TikTok stuff, I said to you, I get way more on the ground information from TikTok in the news cycle than I do from the American owned companies. Like when the stuff was happening in East Palestine, I got way more on the ground coverage on TikTok than Twitter or Facebook or anywhere else. I get it. So it's so it's this weird thing where like the administration, the government's telling you like for your own safety, you have to get rid of this thing. And I'm thinking to myself, like that was the only app that was giving me up to date information about a crisis in America. And you and you're saying you need to ban it for my safety because it's doing all these things that all the American companies have been doing for years anyway. It's a very weird dynamic the more I read about it and the more I look into it. Uh, I was just checking the, uh, ESPN.com. I wanted to be the one to be able to tell you that it's official that Shrewsbury staying. Thank you. Um, because, But it's not on there. That's my – Arizona State did give Hurley a two-year extension. Okay. And Patino welcomed at St. John's. How about that? Did you see that story? Um, the former coach is suing because he was dismissed for, for cause. Uh -huh. Because supposedly he didn't create an environment of something. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those vague – his part of his job was to create an environment of optimal performance, and they said he didn't do it, so he's fired for cause. Yeah. Now, I don't know if fired for cause if they're trying not to pay him, mm. um, but so they because pay, everybody they knows, listen, he's not being fired because he's being fired because they got a chance to get rid of the team. Oh, absolutely. So that is interesting. But anyway, no, no news at least on ESPN.com. No news about Shrewsbury yet, but he's staying. You heard it from me. Thanks. So you can rest easy. Okay. They'd be nuts. To, I, I mean, you can't. You can't. There, you can't. Uh, tastes like good. Even YouTube will ban certain stories due to violent or upsetting content. That is true. There you go. Would you be too um, upset to talk about Shrewsbury? To talk about Shrewsbury? No. I'm, if he didn't I, get I, it, I, you mean? If yeah. he left for Notre Dame? Yeah. No, I wouldn't be too upset. I just think it would be like a... I think for a lot of schools, when you make an offer like that, it's not like detrimental. I think for Penn State to knowingly put all their chips in the middle and for someone to decide like it's still going to be like this still isn't the place, I think would be a little detrimental. I think it would be I think it's a step backwards instead of like staying level. I really do. I think Shrewsbury staying is unbelievably important for reasons that are very – it would be hard to explain to other well, schools why it's so important that Shrewsbury does not turn this offer down. Well, don't you think that – I mean, especially right now. And it, the, the thing about it was it wasn't just a Big Ten run. Yeah. And it wasn't just an NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. It was both. And it was eight days apart mm -hmm. that – yeah, I, I just think the whole athletic community there has to be feeling the, wow, this is what it's like. And wouldn't it be cool if we kept this going? Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I, I don't think it can be ignored. And I, I, I just can't imagine the people like, yeah, if it happens again once every 12 years. And it wasn't like Pitt, who had been to the tournament in 16 and had, it had been a dozen years. And for that, and that was just to make it let alone to win a game. No, I understand. I think the point, like I'm trying to think how to say it. I think the point that I would, that I would take is up until now, if you were Penn State or a Penn State fan or wherever, you could make the argument, we're not good because we haven't necessarily tried. Like we have not put a full investment in. It's very like, I've, in the I one agree Shrews, with that. In the one Shrewsbury interview, he said they're in the bottom out of 14 teams. They're either 13th or 14th in NIL money right now. So at least you could justify it and say, if we wanted to or if we tried it, they are trying. Like it has become very apparent in the last 48 hours. They have made a financial like commitment. What was the word about NIL money commitment? that you said they used? Massive? Massive. I mean, a massive to go, increase to go from last in the Big Ten to basically on par in the Big Ten is massive. Yeah, I mean that is a massive commitment, and so I think it's like the reason I use the word detrimental is because like 
you are swinging as hard as you can right now, having never even taken the bat off your shoulder. And here you are now swinging for, like, arguably the fences. I know I'm not sitting here trying to act like Shrewsbury is the next Dean Smith or anything like that. Right. But, like, you are swinging for the fences here. And so for to not make contact would be like, oh, my God. Like, we're like this is never going to – it would be bad. It'd be really well, and, and you and I, we probably bored some people anyway. But we could talk about this. Well, for I a tried while, to but, talk about TikTok bands. Well, there's there is when you look geographically too, because we've talked here just about life, like kids that some kids that don't really want to go that far from home. Mm-hmm. You know that we have some that you know, like baseball wise, my brother went to California because it was just it, weather wise and everything wise was better. But there is that that geographical like sweet spot. And um, right now, in basketball wise, um, Villanova's down, Syracuse is down, Maryland's okay. Um, there is no in the Northeast. There, if you're a Northeast kid, if you're a New York City kid, UConn's good. Um, but your competition has gotten softer right now at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Like Penn State's as as hot of a buzzword as Maryland is right now, even though Maryland won a national title 20 years ago. So that certainly plays into their favor. The other thing, there has to be a level of a Penn State where they're like, we are a football school, first and foremost. I know wrestling does, but we've talked about the revenue sports and football. We are a football school, first and foremost, but we're not Ohio State and we're not Michigan. Mm. So we are third in the Big Ten. In So instead of putting all our eggs and these sports that are ahead of us in football are also ahead of us in basketball. Mm-hmm. So why can't we be a factor in both? And that has to be playing into their mind somewhere because it just, they can't any longer just sit there and say, Hey, we're a football school. Whatever happens at basketball is fine because there are two revenue generating college sports and it's, it's football, men's basketball. And just to throw one away because football is the one we're going to hang our hat on, but football is only third in the big 10. So I think this past two weeks, three, whatever it was, was uh, a watershed moment for Penn State basketball for the next 10 years. I think Shrewsbury's there for whatever the the length of the contract is. We'll see. We're going to find out. Um, Anything else that you want to talk about? Um, Yeah. um, Somebody's birthday's tomorrow, whether we have a show or not. I have a lot of good things lined up if we do a show tomorrow because it's somebody's birthday. Yeah. Do you think she's still watching? Um, no, no, I don't think she ever watches. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> did you just ask if my girlfriend watches the show? I did. She commented I, the other she, day. She has to deal with this all the time. She you think she... Well, whenever we talk, whenever you start talking basketball, she's all in. All in. She's all big, in. big basketball fan. Um, Robin Floyd commented, speaking of TikTok Friday, my phone kept showing me things I had just spoken about with friends and family in my own home or vehicles. So I did a little research and found out that our phones listen to all of our conversations at all times. How do we think our phone assistant like Hey Google and Katana actually work? That is true. Um, one of the sneakiest ones is I don't do you have a uh, Alexa, a Google no, I do Alexa. Not. Um, those are sneak. They're listening to you all the time. Like for anybody who's not aware yet, if you have a Google Alexa or an Echo in your house, like they are 99% of the time they're listening to what you are saying. Really? So, yeah. Now, what they do with that data and different things, they'll recommend, like Amazon will recommend different things to you if they hear you talk about it in your kitchen. Like the next time you go on Amazon, it'll be like, we recommend. And so they're constantly listening to you. I did not know that. Yeah. In ways that you And your can, phone is too. Um, depending on your setting. Like I have my Siri turned off. So I think my understanding is that if you have your Siri turned off, it doesn't pick up as much that way. But obviously like you're searching for stuff. The app store knows what you're searching for. Like, they, I mean, they know. That's the whole thing. That's kind of my point with TikTok is like, everyone's like, oh, TikTok. Trust me. <laughs> like, the eight, like, the governments in Asia have all your data. They already have it. And you know why? Because American companies that you trust already sold it to them. Like, they have it. It's like, it, like the Asian markets are number one in, like, in exports and importing, like, retail goods. You're telling me those companies don't have a, a benefit of getting the data from Amazon or Facebook or whoever of the things that you are interested in so they know what machines and factories and molds to make to best benefit. Like, it's I feel, insane. I feel violated. You should feel violated. So I don't know. So that's why 
I think I'm, I think I am, I think I'm out on the TikTok ban. I think I'm now, I'm not necessarily like a supporter of TikTok, but I think like to ban it is absurd. I think what's happening is, is that for the first time, government officials in America do not have control over the number one social media platform in the world. Interesting. That's I I have swung the other way on it now after after the last couple of months and kind of reading and trying to figure out how I feel about it. That's that's where I'm leaning now. Now a week from now, if something new comes out, I'll probably swing back the other way. But so what to follow up and take this one step further? What you're saying is though, as long as the government can still control OnlyFans, then they'll be happy. They'll be happy and Facebook OnlyFans OnlyFans number one, Facebook a close second. It is. I mean, th- we already know what Facebook did to like our elections. I was right? proud of that joke. I that was, was good. I laughed. I laughed. I laughed. I laughed. That was, was good. good. But like, think we already know what Facebook did to our elections, like in 2012, 2016. And like, there was, I mean, people talked about like restricting it or like adjusting the advertising model on it, but it was never like we have to ban Facebook, like it's bad for society. Facebook has sold more of your data probably than it's probably a toss up between Amazon and Facebook who has sold more of your data. And there's no talk about like, Banning them or getting rid of them. You know what the thing is? My data has no value, so the joke's on them. You think so? I bet your data Yours, has more. Your va- your data may have value. Mine has none. Because I have more years to live? Or because <laughs> Lots of things. I think your data has value. You I don't, don't think know. so? I don't think You've so. got three kids up and coming. Their value has data. Their value their, has data? Their data, their has, data value. has value. Or both. Maybe both. I don't know. You'd be shocked. You buy a lot of stuff online, though. I buy stupid stuff. And while you're talking, I was just thinking, I bought stuff on eBay yesterday. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I wonder if I got shipped yet. So, well, here, this is but I funny. controlled myself and I didn't check because you get mad at me when I click on other things during the I show. I do. So here's what's funny, though. You, you would have more value because you spend more money online than I do. I don't spend very much money. I, th- that is false. I you don't. don't think you spend more money buying stuff online than I do? No. Really? You do know I buy almost nothing online. I, when I tell you I spend less than fifty dollars a month online, really, that's I don't okay. spend anything because that's the real value. The real. But value. I'm fifty one. Like I don't shop. Like what do I? I have clothes. I have like I buy things that I'm like you should have seen a couple of things I almost bought <laughs> yesterday because I'm like oh that's like I almost bought Christmas gifts yesterday because I saw something and I was like well that's cool who can I give it to. And then, what is it? March, whatever. Like, I don't, the older you get, the more you realize you don't need anything. Cause you're already, if you don't have it yet, like you never needed it. Um, baby boomer and Gen X data, super important because they have the most disposable income. So there you go. I mean, I can see that, but we don't, I don't know. A lot of our disposable income is going to like tuition and our kids and, that's the boomer's fault. It is. There's. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> oh, we love the boomers. I love boomers. I just want to say that out loud for the record. Um, I'm Jeff Ever. He's Mark. I just hope the boomers still love us because they still have all the money. <laughs> I think they do. I think they still love us. Um, thank you guys for watching the Midday Show. Be sure to go to NorthCentralBay.com for all of your local news. Um, I'm celebrating a birthday tomorrow, and then we'll be back Friday. Well, it's not your and birthday. We'll, I said a birthday. I said I'm, we're celebrating a birthday tomorrow. I'm celebrating a birthday. Yeah. I didn't say it was my birthday. I said I'm celebrating Can you birthday. celebrate somebody else's birthday? Isn't that, I've never, that's the whole point of a birthday is to celebrate. When you go while they sell. I, Time out. I've never when your daughter it. has a birthday, you don't celebrate her birthday. You just go to it. You don't celebrate it. We are celebrating her birthday. It's just weird. I would have never said I'm celebrating my daughter's birthday. Like she okay. celebrates her birthday. I, I'm going to the party. I, I would have never said it that I get what you're saying and you're probably right. I've never heard someone say that I'm celebrating someone else's birthday. What a negative way to look at birthdays that you just go to them and you don't celebrate them. I have. That's interesting. <laughs> By the way, and I'm like the most anti birthday person you've <laughs> you're, ever you're met. You're the Grinch. And I'm, I am the I'm Grinch of more, birthdays. I am huh. the Grinch of birthdays, and I'm sitting here. I almost you. bought birthday cards yesterday for no one in particular, <laughs> just because they were funny. Um, no, it's, I, I guess you're right. I think yeah. you're right. I just never heard it that way or never thought of it that way. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to celebrate a birthday tomorrow. That's what I'm going to do. I'm Jeff Ever. What if Mark she doesn't Cena. invite you? Oh, I'm invited. I'm invited. Huh. It's interesting. I'm invited. 
mostly because my dog's invited. But then I'm, but I'm invited. I don't know. You've so got, dog can be. you've still got eleven hours to piss her off, where you can be disinvited. Um, no. I'm. You know what's funny? The longer we go into the relationship, you just know what's going to upset them, and you kind of. That's what the good couples do. Yeah. You, I, I, uh, friends of mine who are like maybe the best couple I know. Yeah. And they said, through the years, we've learned like the buttons huh? that, and we don't push them. I like, try not we to. can tell, we can tell what buttons to push and what buttons not to push, and we don't push those buttons. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many times we have a conversation, and this is the A to B. Are you ready? Someone, one of us will say, "Why did you do that?" And the response is, "Because I, because I didn't want to upset you." And I and I honestly I don't think that's a horrible place no, to be in your relationship. I'm with you. That yeah. those are the good relationships have figured out some of that balance. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's more than just pick your battles, yeah. but it's oh, and we still have battles. Like I'm oh, every yes. yes, we still oh, have I, battles, but yes. we have gotten to a place now. Do you win any of those? Um, win is a strong word. <laughs> Here's the funny part. I I survive. Somebody, my debates. I have been told by friends and family that my debate strategy is. Not to win. It's just to make sure that I do not lose. So See, those are frustrating. Yeah. I, could, I would think from just you and her, and I've never seen you and her in a, in a real <laughs> blowout, which would be fun. Um, I think you your ability to stay calm during, drives her nuts. Would drive her insane. It drives most people insane. Because while she's emotional and you would ref, not refuse to be emotional because you get pissed off too, but you're you're such an even keeled person that your lack of of energy in the argument would would i would also find. i also smile and laugh at times as like a tension breaker because like in the moment i do like because two hours from the argument the word, it doesn't it's matter. gonna be ridiculous so anyway. i will find myself smiling or laughing at certain things that i say or she says within the argument of just kind of like the because you know the ridiculous of it yeah down the road. and yeah, so I that does it. that does not help either. i that, can see if that you really want to upset people and that makes it worse argument, it's like telling her to relax a little bit yes but yeah i could see that that would no. be fun for me doesn't all right sign us off because i already tried all right we'll see you tomorrow happy birthday <laughs> later <laughs> he loves us another solid ending guy. <laughs> <laughs> they can we ban him? him? No, 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 we can't ban him. He's tastes, mean. Tastes He's like mean good. We can't ban him. He's mean. Thank you us. guys for watching Midday Show. I'm Jeff Everett. He's Mark Messina. Be sure to go to NorthSavannah.com for all of your local news. We'll see you guys on Friday. See you at IHOP. <laughs>